she can confidently say that like 30% of her business as an agent is coming from social media, you know, yeah. because she actually puts in the effort. Welcome back to This Is Actually Real Estate, where we sit down to share stories and hard learned lessons from working in real estate, all from experiences you just can't make up. Welcome back to This Is Actually Real Estate. I'm your host, Samantha Zanayand, and I'm joined by... David Bushauer, your co-host. Uh, so we've been very active on social media. We have. As of late, as of recently. So we want to talk a little bit today about social media, social media tips from a marketing director such as myself, um, and then what agents we've seen have been doing so far in social media. So uh, I guess let's just dive right in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, social media is one of the biggest things I feel like in any business, especially if you're an entrepreneur. And then, of course, in the real estate world, whether it's commercial, I mean, we see it a ton in commercial. Everybody wants to be covered on their preferred social media platforms. Mm. And it's definitely the same with, I mean, it's huge with residential. So I know you right. deal with that all the time being the director. Right. It's, um, you know, with social media, the thing is, it's free. Unless you're running ads on social media, it's a free way to get your your marketing materials and everything out to a lot of people, a lot more people than, you know, say, I don't know, even maybe even just a print ad or something, you know, because a print oh, yeah. ad, you know, in like a local newspaper, it might hit, yeah, maybe a few hundred, maybe a couple thousand, you never know. But, you know, social media has the potential to go just way beyond that, yeah. you know, and like I'm getting a thing right now. It's not social media, but... <laughs> It is related um, to it. You know, but we are, it kind of, it, it makes me think about um, meeting people where they're at, right? Because, like, what do we do when we're bored? You know, like TV, for example, right? Like, if we're watching TV, I know you don't have a TV. Yeah, but I watch it all on my phone. Yeah. Or my laptop. Yeah. Well, if I'm watching TV, it's like, if a commercial comes on, then mm. I'm going on my phone anyways. Yeah. Right? You know, I'm not watching the commercials um, unless it's like some something like the Super Bowl where you're watching the commercials because there's a lot of eyes on the commercials. They're yeah. like, oh, who's going to have the best one, right? That's literally like the only time I the, feel like in a year yeah. where everyone's like, oh, I can't wait for those commercials. Right. And then that's that's worth it. As Gary Vee says, uh, you know, that's probably one of the most underpaid, underpriced um, advertising mediums. As far as the Super Bowl ads specifically, not advertising on TV because people overpay for advertising on TV so much. Do you think so? Because there are some commercials that I feel like are just so famous. Like I can think off the top of my head. Do you remember the Burger King one with, where he had like small hands? I don't. <laughs> His hands were too small for the Burger King burgers because they were so big. Oh my gosh. It was like my favorite commercial But you school. said like, do, so I want to unpack that because you said, do you remember? How long ago was this commercial? This commercial was back when I was in high school because that was when I was watching TV and watching commercials. I will say now, so when I watch TV, it's on streaming networks or it's on YouTube TV. And mm -hmm. with YouTube TV, you can fast forward through right. the commercials. So I truly don't watch them. Right, because we all grew up with these um, these like memorable commercials, right? You know, mm -hmm. Stanley Steamer or, you know, 877 Cash Now, right? Yeah. And um, so th they were memorable, but like, it was kind of before the mass adoption of social media. Even when you were in high school, that's, you know, the early days of Instagram, right? That and was college, actually. But yes, I know exactly what yeah. you're... Yeah, it's kind of crazy because I feel like everybody now isn't watching TV, but they are on social media and they are on the streaming network. So they're kind of forcing ads through there. Like even right. in podcasts, I've noticed a lot of my podcasts that I listen to have a ton more like commercials. And it's just like... The podcast hosts mm -hmm. saying the commercials, but they are like, you know, we're still getting hit with those ads. Now when I'm on Instagram, I'm I'm like shocked at how many ads I see and how little actual content I see. Right. Yeah, I know. And it's like we we've we're trained to know what an ad is on on like Facebook or Instagram. Like we know to look for the sponsored, you know, yeah. underneath their name. Or we we just have this feel. And um like with the uh video ads, right? So what a lot of people will do and what a lot of marketers warn against against is or a lot, a lot of big companies will just repackage their television ad for social. 
and that doesn't, it's a very tone deaf approach because it's, you know, you're not respecting the medium, you know? It's just like expecting Like in a terms t- of how it looks on social media or like in terms of like the way the commercial comes across on social media. Right. It's like it can just be uh, Yeah, so it's like the the actual content of the commercial, right? Mm-hmm. So they just take exactly what they put on TV and they're like call 877 blah blah blah. It's like, well, if I'm on social media, I'm not going to go into another app to try to call a number, you know? That's mm. like that's kind of like a structural example. Um, you, in that example, you would be like, you know, hey, comment below what your blah 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 is, you know, or what your favorite, okay, you know, or comment below what your questions are, or something, you know, or we, hey, we have a live stream, something like that, you know. It's not respecting the medium if you're just re- repacking, repackaging it from TV. Um, so, because like social media is a place to engage, um, and. And another thing I've noticed, I don't know, have you noticed this? A lot of ads on TV uh, have like QR codes on them now. Oh, have you I seen haven't that? noticed that as much. No, I have noticed it kind of. So what I've been paying attention to a lot on social media is I'm like following for all anyone who cares, uh, the Vanderpump Rules drama. Um, so all of those influencers are really stepping into different platforms. Like um, one of them now specifically, she does like all of her clothes on an Amazon Live. So you can see what she's mm. wearing, purchase the outfits on Amazon, and it's all like linked. And I think she does involve QR codes. But like mm-hmm. that's been super interesting too, how they're really utilizing influencers on Amazon to get more products sold. Yeah. You know, and it, it kind of brings it down to the we can be influencers or we can be affiliate marketing or we can, you know, it's not just celebrities anymore, right? Yeah. It's just like there's a lower barrier to entry than there was before, right? Definitely. Before the advent yeah. of social media. Um, but, you know, talking about the QR codes, the, you know, you wouldn't, I wouldn't put a QR code on Facebook or Instagram. It doesn't make sense. Because you're already on your phone. You're, so you're not going to take a picture phone. of it. You're not yeah. going to screenshot it. and You can't. You know, you, right. you're not going to be like, hey, buddy, can you bring your phone over here so I can take a, yeah. you know, That's scan the QR crazy. code on right. my phone? Yeah. So um, so it, it, it can be shallow when people do that. And that's big companies doing it, you know, like really? where they just repackage their stuff. Um, but social media, um, and I, I want to harken back to like the South by um, comment of like it's it's generating that niche right you can find your tribe so because like niche is somewhere that you can belong so if you can hone that in on social media then then you're going to have the engagement through the roof um, and I think I heard a statistic somewhere of that um, social media spending money on ads on social media is like for, for the amount of engagement you actually get um, is like eight to ten times or six to eight times more worth it or cheaper. So oh. like you get more, a lower cost per engagement on social media than TV. Okay. That's, I mean, that definitely absolutely makes sense to me. What right. I think is interesting is each social media platform is so different in terms of the audience. Hmm. Like now that I'm no longer working at the residential office, um, I am barely on Facebook. And truly, yeah. I don't know many people who are like using Facebook that are younger. Mm-hmm. It is truly like, what 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 generation would like our boomer generation that's on it right now? Like yeah. it's not really like Gen X. Gen X are like younger. Like right. a lot of my cousins who are in their 20s don't even have a Facebook account. So right. it's kind of crazy to me as an agent to be spending all this time on Facebook since it's kind of truly the audience is like leaving. Right. You know, and that that's something there too. You know, it's like realtors, they, like Facebook is like one of the main that's what they, I mean, we work with a lot of realtors at yeah. that office. I mean, we're talking like a oh, hundred plus realtors, yeah. I think. And they're all like, Facebook is like the biggest yeah. platform for them. But it's kind of crazy because truly like all of the new buyers are on, I mean, actually, and I would argue all generations are really on TikTok right now. Like everybody's You'd be at surprised. least watching TikTok. Yeah. 
That's that's a common misconception too. That TikTok is just younger no, generation. No, I mean everybody yeah, right now. It is everyone. Instagram, I would say, is more of like a younger. I mean, would you say that? I think Instagram actually has a good representation across the board because I see. I mean, and just this is from my own experience. I see people across generations. You know, in there that are boomers, that are you know Gen Z. All of them using it and engaging with it, not See, just I having feel an like account. Gen Z is kind of over it, and I feel like the boomers that I know that are on it are on it, but they're mm-hmm. not great at posting. And it, they're for right. whatever reason, they're very hesitant. They're nervous about their image with it. But like, right. I do feel like everybody in general is so excited about like doing some type of content on TikTok because it's very easy. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the Facebook is. That's why it's still you know, the the boomer generation. Yeah, because they, you know, okay, it finally got around to them to where they can understand it. And yes. not, not to say that they're stupid, but like just like the adoption. It's user. I think it's more user-friendly than Instagram right. for some reason. I don't but know But then why. you can do more on Facebook than you can on Instagram and TikTok combined. Because you yeah, can share you articles. Too. You, can sh- you can do groups. You can do blah, blah, blah. They built it out just so much. So right. there's, you know, I like Facebook. I go, I go on Facebook, you know? Okay. And not even just from a business perspective, like managing like accounts and everything and pages, I should say. Um, but just like I, you know, I want to watch more longer form video. Mm-hmm. So that's why like Facebook and YouTube, they're competitors. Like Facebook and TikTok, not so much. Like Instagram and TikTok, you know, because okay. Facebook has their reels, but yeah, uh, same as Instagram. But either way, they don't pop off as much as Instagram or they- or TikTok. Because also Facebook, you can only have X amount of friends. Which I think is right. really interesting. I remember like four thousand um, or whatever. A couple of family members and friends. Like I have to delete people on Facebook because I need to add other people. <laughs> like some of these random people have to go because they've built up. I mean, it's really interesting how some people have truly built such successful businesses through their Facebook following. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, like the the building a business as a realtor okay. on Facebook or on social media in general. So when you became a, an agent, when you got your license. <clears throat> Did you immediately go and just start trying to do the social media thing? Or did you were you more of like a one-on-one, I want to send them stuff, maybe email marketing, maybe mailings, or like did you or did you instantly recognize that social media would be something that could help I you in your business? Instantly knew social media would be huge just because my mother-in-law has been in the industry for like 30 plus years. And I mean, I have friends, I have family members, I have random people who when they connect the dots to like who I'm related to, they're like, oh my gosh, I see her all over the place, Mm. like in terms of signage. But also, I mean, she is incredibly busy, incredibly successful, but I would say her presence on Facebook in particular is like what is makes her so Mm. recognizable. And she's the type of person who she loves networking. Mm -hmm. And when she networks, she adds them on Facebook. Yeah. So she has like I think she has the maximum amount of friends and she does a really nice job of kind of posting about her personal life as well as Mm. her business life. She was very much so like, I'm not going to create a separate account. I'm not going to have a realtor page, which I know there's like very different schools of thoughts with that. But like for Mm. her in particular, that's what I thought. I thought she only had a personal account on there. Only a personal account. And I don't, I mean like, her friends and her family, like, also, she's just, like, a very kind person who has just, like, a lot Love of her. friends. Like, she yeah. has a huge network. And she's really engaging with others. I think Facebook is also another platform. I mean, I would argue you can engage pretty well on Instagram, but Facebook mm. in particular, you start to recognize, like, oh, my gosh, she commented again. Like, right. she, re- like you feel like you're growing a friendship and a connection, especially on Facebook. And she just does that really well right. to the point where people really remember, oh, she's a realtor. Right. And like there's there's someone I was listening to recently. Um, she was on a podcast. She's an agent as well. And, you know, she can confidently say that like 30% of her business as an agent is coming from social media, you know, yeah. because she actually puts in the effort and not even just in a like, hey, look, I got a new listing. Look at me. But like the upfront value for buyers, sellers and other agents, too, because then they feel the confidence in referring her. You know, say, yeah. say, because this was a, a agent down in Texas. So say it was someone in Dallas and then they're like, oh, I need to, she's in Austin, which is like, I was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> you know, it just got back. Right. Um, but there, you know, it's that networking that you were talking about. Yeah. No. And I, 
I will say on social media, I'm still kind of getting into TikTok. It's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of platforms. Yeah. But on Instagram as well, like I actually do make an effort to comment on stories, like to respond yeah. or to like comment on their posts. And like, again, you're building a community. You're building a network there where people, I also think in general, when you like and oh no, it's when you post. The more you post, the more you come up in general on people's right. feeds. So. Instagram does like that. It does like, you know, where if in the hour or two before you do a post a post, mm-hmm. post a picture, post a whatever reel, um, and the hour after, hour or two after, um, it will reward you a little bit more because it's like, hey, you're not just putting out content. The you're whole, engaging. You know, you're engaging you know, you're making the platform better by engaging. So there's That's something al- that... algorithmically there that is rewarding that. Speaking about the algorithm, though, mm-hmm. did you hear, maybe we talked about this, that Instagram is not going to prioritize reels as much anymore. You told me that. And I think that's so fascinating because I've noticed, so we have been really pushing reels for the past week. Mm -hmm. And because we've been pushing it so much and they have been pretty successful, um, I'm seeing them on my personal Instagram a lot more. Mm -hmm. Where like when I get on there, every couple of videos is one of our reels. Right. Like So like Instagram, what they were doing is it was a new... They were obviously copying TikTok, right? You know, when they came out with reels. So... Um, what they were doing is they would ha- let your reel or your reel was more likely to get a few thousand views, you know, um, than a carousel post or a single picture post or a story. Of, of course, more than a story inherently. But um, so now what they've done, though, is I've seen they are for 2023 are going to prioritize pictures again, just picture posts and carousel posts kind of getting back to what Instagram was intended for. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Because they're they're like, okay, we kind of got carried away with the reels, you know? Which they did. I mean, it just, I kind of get frustrated in the sense, I feel like each platform has its like time and place and purpose. Mm -hmm. And I get tired of like trying to copy the same idea. Just because it's working doesn't mean we all should do the same thing. Yeah. There's no original content then. And there's no point in having all these different platforms. It's like. Right. Right. And I mean, so, I mean, c- picture and carousel posts now will, you know. I haven't noticed that yet, though. Do you know when that's going to start happening? Because you're saying 2023, so, like, should it be happening now? Well, yeah, well, y- you're right to say that we haven't noticed that happening. Because um, our reels get way more engagement than, than our, our posts. Than oh, our posts. Yeah. Um, so, it was just from the, I forget, it was someone high up at Instagram who hey, had South said Southwest this. Southwest or something? Um, no, he. I, I forget where he said. He said it's some article uh, or some new news company. But either way, he they were just kind of saying like we realize that we've pushed reels a lot. But if you look at the numbers, it's still like fifty percent engagement or fifty percent of the people are still really engaging with the picture posts. You know. Okay. And they're they're not promoting them equally fifty fifty. So they're p- promoting reels more. So it's like, okay, well, oh. so, you know, people still want to use, they, they still go to Instagram for a purpose, right? Um, instead of just, you know, trying, it's, instead of it being just the platform that everyone, anyone who liked vertical video ended up on, you right. know, if that makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like, oh, they all have vertical video now. YouTube has vertical video now. So it's like, well, just pick your favorite, you know? Rather than, and like TikTok's kind of the app to go to for v- vertical video, you know? Um, but everyone's hopping in the bandwagon, and you see that often um, when it comes to social media and tech companies in general. I have a question about um, how to get your post kind of more engagement in general. I remember hashtags were really big. Oh, yeah. And then they became like laughable. Yeah. Like nobody was doing them. Right. And now, I'm, from my understanding, they're coming back. They help you get like more of an audience. And I actually do sometimes look up hashtags, mainly because yeah. I'm using hashtags to get people. So I'm like, oh, let me just see what comes up if I put right. in this hashtag. So hashtags are interesting. Yeah. So I remember back in the day, um, back in, <laughs> back in the in early day. days of Instagram, it was, you know, you'd have your, in your notes on your phone, you'd have a list of all the ha- most popular hashtags, like love, boy, girl, you know, every, li- like, you know, travel, right? Okay. And it was all these most, just to get 100, 200 likes on your, you know, on your photo. 
Um, and then it just didn't, it seems like you said, like they weren't prioritized for a while. It just kind of like yeah. hit a low point. Um, I will say this about hashtags. So hashtags can be good nowadays okay. um, for that engagement. Um, if you're posting niche hashtags, you know, specific hashtags instead of those hashtag travel, hashtag travel vlog. Really? Because I always do the one with the most um, hashtags. So like if I were to put in like real estate, mm-hmm. that would have like millions. Billions. But you're saying to do something a little bit more niche, like more do specific. Do more niche. That's where you're going to find your tribe. Okay. You know? Um, and then people, and it's it's shown that people are more likely to engage, you know? So for like real estate, it might be a good idea like if you're doing a post with hashtags to kind of do it like what with your town because that would be kind of neat. And then you're building kind of a network in the area that you're going to be selling. Right. Like we, um, what did we do? We did one for our some of our AI posts this week um, where we said like AI, oh, I wish I remember what, what it was because there was like future tech and that was like billions of views on it Yeah, on the uh on that hashtag okay. on TikTok. Um, but there were some like that were AI something, you know, AI scaries or whatever it was. Oh, you I know? like that. Yeah, yeah. right. That is I know you love your Sunday scaries. I do love my Sunday scaries. Um, hashtag Sunday scaries. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Hashtag Sunday scaries. Um, so yeah, anyways. Um, but that's what realtors can do. I mean, <sighs> yeah, maybe the town. But then again, it's like I'm not, living in Illinois or living in the Chicagoland area, you know, I'm not looking at the Chicago hashtags. You know, I'm not, I'm like the travel, even the travel photos. I keep coming back to the travel photos because it's still a big, you know, yeah. um, trendy thing. But Well, I actually think people would look up travel hashtags because when you're planning a trip yeah. and you want a specific, a specific area and you're but interested about it. living here, I'm not, I'm not going to be looking at hashtags of Chicago. So, a ro- right. you know, so oh. a local realtor is probably not engaged. They're probably engaging with people outside of Chicago. But then again, maybe for relocations, you know, um, that could be a strategy. Because that's an, that's another thing. That's a very good point. I'm sorry. You just gave me a, you know. Um, is it worth it for a real estate agent to be trying to get a following on Instagram or on TikTok or wherever if, like a lot of those people don't even live in the area. Like they're just hitting mass amounts of different people all over the U.S. rather than, you know, rather than hitting the exact people that they want to regionally. Yeah, I mean, so the I could see the value in investing that time in like a TikTok in the sense like if it's a catchy video and you come across as knowledgeable in your industry, like I think that will always just be good. Mm-hmm. Um, and also people are really excited about social media like if you are like let's say i don't know you mean like like you're saying they that person may not be from the area that they sell in but like if they're really doing well on social media i mean again circling back to where we where i used to work with you um we had a couple realtors who were really good at social Mm -hmm. media and the whole office knew about it i mean even if they only had like between you and me even if they had a couple videos that were like quote unquote had like a lot of reach right um, everybody knew about it. And they're like, yeah. I want to learn how to do that. And like, I think also yeah. then like people in the area, you know, in that town also kind of thought of them as an expert and also very popular yeah. on social media. Yeah. It's, uh, that's a great point with the, cr- it builds a lot of credibility. Cause like, what if, you know, if you, if you just meet someone, you know, you give them maybe your Instagram or say they just look you up, right. Mm-hmm. Um, like a, a potential client, um, th- and they see you have, like a lot of views yeah. and a lot of content. Millions of views and yes. 20,000, 40,000 followers, yep. you know. Um, that holds, that's crazy how much credibility that holds. Right. If you have a lot of followers, a lot of views on these videos, I think people are more likely to assume you are an expert in that field, which is wild because some of yeah. these videos, I mean, like they're just like, no, they're nothing. Like, an, yeah. I say that, like, it's fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's not like I'm trying to put that down, but I, like <laughs> some of these videos are just kind of like five seconds of like them dancing. And yeah, it's like, right? And yeah, it's not even like, yeah. you know, um, credibility building in a sense, right. like the the the, uh, the bulk of the content or what the heart of the content, right. you know, it's not that trust building, whatever you're securing yourself as an expert. But I will say um, this, the, hmm, how do I say this? 
The social currency of today is views and engagements and likes. Yeah. Like that is the social currency now. It's, you know, yeah, reviews work well, you know, but the social currency is that is the clout. <laughs> yeah, no, it's you know? true. Um, it's kind of crazy. Did you ever watch that Black Mirror episode where um, they had like you were ranked in life based off social media? Like you would like lose so. a credit score or something if you weren't like well liked on social yeah. media and it like came into play in like real life. Like it was almost like you were getting like Google reviews by your right. interactions with people. You had a social and, score or something. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of like gives me like a little bit of creepy vibe when we think about that because it's actually so true. I mean, truly, that's how you become an influencer. And if you become an influencer, you can get like partnered up with some really powerful brands. And you'll just kind of be able to really build a successful career. But I do want to say, I think people are, I think all consumers are actually quite intelligent. And they are yeah. looking for that good content. Like, yeah. you, I mean, as we see more people build a presence on social media, I do think what will keep people successful in terms of clients' transactions and what truly matters in this case is like real estate, selling yeah. and buying real estate is going to be if you have content out there that actually makes you credible. So you talk about the home buying and selling process. Like, mm -hmm. you know, do more than just kind of like do a funny joke about real estate because that's there's a lot of that out there. But yeah. like, I think people really are craving more knowledge about the industry. Right. You know, because as like, as everyone in some sense wants to be in real estate, whether they want to be an investor someday or they want to be an agent or whatever, they're like, you know, everyone has some little little bit of interest. Oh, absolutely. You know? Everybody that I talk to is always asking, like, how's the market? Yeah. What should we expect for this year? Um, what's going on with investing? Like, whether that be, you know, being a landlord or doing Airbnb or whatever. Yeah. Like, people are absolutely very interested in that because it's a very lucrative business. And it's also a very powerful and very cool business. Yeah. You know, um, so people will not hmm, – people will – how do I say this too? I'm trying to I'm trying to get like these little sound bites, I guess, you know, <laughs> <laughs> for social media. You know? Uh -huh. But like I, I'm trying so um people can tell if you you half asked something. You uh, know? Yeah, no, truly. Like you might think that they don't, but they can tell, you know? And those are less likely to be I say less likely to be um, you know, engaged with content, popular content, because there's at the end of the day, there's no rhyme or reason, you know? Right. Like, there, there there, are things that you can do, you know, if you find out some formula, you're like, oh, I put a hook in the beginning within the first second or two seconds. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, oh, my thumbnail should look like this. There, there's, there's formulas that you can do, but, you know, at the end of the day, some stupid video that took you two seconds to make can just blow up out of nowhere, you know? Yeah. Um, some kid in Idaho. Right. Can just, I don't know, uh, come a celebrity overnight, which is, you know, insane. You don't need American Idol anymore or whatever. I know. Yeah. Which is like, you know, again, there's positive, there's negatives, there's a lot yeah. to impact in there. But yeah. um, before we wrap up, I did want to talk just what do you think are some tips, like a couple tips about each platform for people who are looking to build um, a following on Facebook, on Instagram, and on TikTok? So, um, one thing that I will say, and this is actually across all platforms. So one thing you can do is make sure you're on at least five platforms. All right? Really? Yes. Okay. Five platforms. So like we have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, you and YouTube. All right? We are not on Twitter. It's a principled stance. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but either way, we have five platforms. If you can get in the habit of posting eight to 12 pieces of content across those five channels every day, every day. That's eight to 12 pieces of content. Wow, that's a lot. That, it's a lot. I know it sounds scary. It does sound But just scary. focus on the creating. That's my challenge, all right? You'll, you will be amazed at what you can actually accomplish by just, because like, okay, Instagram, I'll give you three. Okay. Real. Mm -hmm. Boom. Maybe that's a little more, whatever, drawn out, right? Like planned or something, right? Yeah, I mean, all these take work. Yeah. Um, then a picture post, right? Mm -hmm. It can be a meme. It can be a listing. It can be whatever, you know, or just a quote. Moti Monday motivation. Um, story. 
mm-hmm. right? So there's three right there that you can. <laughs> sorry, my phone was ringing. Mm-hmm. Um, that you can post right on Instagram, and then Facebook, right? You can share an article. Yeah. Then you can make a video. Then you can just make a story post on there as well. So that's six right there between two. So, but make sure you're hitting all of them. You know, that's the thing. Um, and you can re. Second, you can repurpose content. So um, it, it might seem a little counter- counterintuitive to what I was saying about TV versus social media to where mm-hmm. they just repackage it. But in some cases, it makes sense to do that. Where like Instagram and TikTok are very similar right? right? with their reels mm-hmm. and their vertical videos. So yeah, just mirror it. You know, I wouldn't have the, tic- uh, the TikTok or the Instagram logo on the um, on the video, okay. so I wouldn't download it from TikTok after you posted TikTok. Mm. You can if you want to get some more following, but um, I don't. I think that loses credibility. You know, you want to just be like, "Hey, I made this for this um, for this, this platform," okay. and you know, uh, finally, just be authentic. You know, don't like, don't hold yourself up on this pedestal. You know, uh, just like, don't be a, like, don't be afraid to fail. You know, yeah. no, like, absolutely. Just, just try stuff and then you'll that will attract the the people that will follow you for a while and engage with you yeah, that will you'll be get your, your little, die hard yeah. fans I love that okay all right so with that being said i think our next guest is here so cuz i keep getting phone calls so we'll have to go let him in but before we do please go give us a subscribe give us a subscribe please go subscribe to us on youtube Go follow us on any of the five channels that I mentioned, and we will see you next week.